Hello and welcome to Tech Tool India. In this video, I am going to explain you how you can use username and password for login using Laravel Authentication Scaffolding. If you are coming to this channel for the first time, please do subscribe our channel to never miss any video on Laravel. So without wasting any time, let's get started. I have already installed Laravel 9 on my machine. If you want to know how you can install Laravel 9, you can check out the video in the description. So we have installed Laravel Authentication Scaffolding, which will comes with login and registration feature. If you go to the login, it actually accepts the email and password. And if you go to the register, it will take name, email, password and confirm password to register a user. So what in this video, so in this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain how you can take username while registering and use username as a login uh, credential with as username and password for login. So without wasting any time, let's get and update our register form. To do that, what we need to do, we need to jump into the code. We have our resources folder, views folder. Inside that we have our auth folder. And if you open this register.blade.php file, you'll see we have name, email, password and confirm password. So what I'm going to do here after name, I'm going to copy this name field and paste it here and name it as username, right? So I'm going to give a name of username. So let's call it username here. And uh, just to distinguish, we'll give it username field and ID will be again username and name also will become username here form name field name input field name is name and again for errors and then so let's go in our form refresh this you can see we have one more field called username right now if you see our users migration table it has name, email, email verified, password, remember token, created at and updated at, but it doesn't have any username field. To add a username field in an existing table, what we need to do, we need to create a migration, which will add a username field just after name. So let's go ahead and create our migration file. To create a migration, what we need to do, we need to run a command, php artisan make migration add username in users table i'm giving this name to migration as soon as i hit this command it will create a add username in users table file where inside database migrations folder right so what we need to do here we need to add our username field so what i'm going to do here I'm just going to add a field which will be a string and the name of the field is username and this should be after name field. I think that's it. It's just like we need to add a username which is a varchar and it will be after name. In the down function what we need to do we need to drop this column username when someone roll back this particular migration, right? So we completed our migration to run this. I am going ahead and just running this command migrate PHP artisan migrate. So this has been run successfully. Let's go in our database, refresh this. As you can see, we have one username field, which is non nullable. The next thing which we need to do here is to update our user model, right? Let's open user model. Here in the fillable, we need to define another field, which is username. So we have defined this username as a fillable property so that when we are registering, username will be a fillable, right? So let's go 
and check out our register controller. Go inside app HTTP controller auth and then register controller. In register controller, if you see, we have validation for name, email, password and confirm password. Let's add a validation for username as well here. So I have added a validation for username, which will be a string required and maximum 255. That's fine. So we have added our validator and now while creating what we need to do, we need to insert username as well while creating our user, right? So we have updated this as well. Let's go ahead and check our registration function if it is working or not. So I'm just using this as a test user one as a username and test user at test.com. I'm taking password and let's register it. Once you register, you can see like we have successfully registered and login in our dashboard. If you go to database and refresh it, you'll see your username field has been there in database. So let's log out. Now, if you try to log in, what it actually accepts, it accepts email address and password. So I'm going ahead and checking with our email and password and it's working. So now what if I want to log in with username and password? So in order to achieve that, what we need to do, we need to understand first how the login is working for us. So let's go into code, open our app HTTP controllers and auth controller in that we have login controller. When you go to the login controller, you'll see we have a trait which is authenticate user. If you open this trait, there is a function called username. So let's find if we get this username field, right? So here, it is actually a function. So if you go ahead and find the username. So if you f look at this, get the login username to be used by the controller. So in username, it actually returning the name of field, which should be considered as a username, right? Right now, by default, it comes up with the function of username, which returns the email. So what you can do, you can simply copy this function and in our login controller, we can override our trade function. So let's add this username function here. And in username function, instead of email, I just write it username. Of course, whatever field you are writing here in username function should be a part of users table. Then only it's going to work. As we have updated to username, let's go and check out our login function. So as I go and log in, now if I try to log in with email address, it should fail, right? Because we have updated. So if you see, it's not working. But what if I just try with my username, right? The username was test user one and I'm going ahead and entering the password and click login. So as we have this email field, so we need to update the email, I mean, login form as well. So let's go ahead and open our login form. In order to open the login form, you need to go into resources, views, and then auth. Here you have the login.blade.php file, right? The first field is input of email. So instead of email, we need to do what we need to do here. We need to write a username here because we are taking now username and everything where we have email should be replaced with username, right? And in type, we'll just take as a text, right? Cool. So we have updated our login form. Let's go ahead and refresh our page. Now you can see in a login form, we are accepting the username and password. So 
let's update this username and in password I'm going to enter the password and I hit login button you see you can log in with your username and password by just updating a simple function in our login controller which is username right so it's really simple all you need to do you can use any of the field of your users table either email or username or mobile number or any other field or unique id or something like that so it's very simple you just need to add a simple username function in your login controller and written the field name into that function and it will enable that login with that particular field name right so i hope this video is informative for you if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe our channel do share this video with your friends if you face any issue while implementing this please do comment out your issues i'll try to solve all those Till the next video, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you for watching.